are Nikki and Carlo and our family live in Positano, Italy, nearly 500 steps from the road but surrounded by fruit and olive trees and with a fabulous view. Our garden overlooks the sea and we grow our own food. We show you what life is really like on the Amalfi Coast. So please subscribe and welcome to the Positano Diary. patate qua dentro we also have some apricots that need to be picked they're ripe by now yum I'll pick them later it is looking to be a very hot day today I think the temperatures are supposed to hit between 37 and 39 degrees Celsius today and tomorrow and over the next few days, unfortunately. <laughs> but life still has to carry on, so I'm gonna take you with us today. I've got to go into town and do a few things. Carlo and Luca are digging up potatoes and there's something special growing in the greenhouse that I want to show you. I am aware that I have not showed you what's been growing in the garden for a long, long time. So let's have a quick peek into the greenhouse and see what's there. Obviously at this time of year, we've got all the tomatoes and I know we did show you them when Luca was planting them, but they're starting to ripen now, which is great. But the interesting thing that we've grown this year, that we never normally have, are white eggplants. Look at those. We ate a huge one the other day, the one there. They're very pretty, lovely. Can't tell much difference with the taste, to be honest, but they look nice. Now, I think Luca's planted everything in fairly similar order to last year. So here we have cucumber vines and a jungle of zucchini. What is going on? So this is our potato field this year and it needs to be dug up. Lucas started yesterday. He's done quite a lot, especially thinking about this heat. Carla's up helping him today. <laughs> That's brilliant. Was it? Luke has just been telling me that the white melons are really good if they're um, barbecued. So slice them up into like like burger size slices and barbecue them and then brush them with olive oil and garlic. And that's really nice. And then there's another way of doing them, which I need to look up, which um, they're coated in breadcrumbs and with mozzarella. So I'm not sure how to do that one. I'll look it up. He took about 10 of them home yesterday. So the ones we've just seen in the greenhouse will probably be right in a few days time or next week sometime. So we will experiment with them. Now, as many of you know, my book came out um, about 10 days ago now. I have no idea what the date is today, but roughly about 10 days ago. 
I've dropped various locations around town in various places for sale and I'm going to go around today. I've got a couple of people have said I can drop off some more so I'm going to get another box of books. I had eight boxes of books, 150 books delivered to me the other day so not obviously here at home. I'd never get them back up the steps again so they're up at the road level and I'm going to go and take another box down into town and I'll take you with me, show you where I'm dropping them off. And if you do need links to the books, they're all in my Instagram uh, highlights reel. So I've saved links for some of the main Amazon sites and, and the locations around town of where they are, if anybody wants to get one. Abbiamo portato le patate qua giù perché devono stare al buio e al fresco. Questo è il posto più fresco e buio di questa casa. Ah, amore, dobbiamo anche raccogliere i fagiolini. Okay. Vuoi dare una mano? Ok, va bene. <ride> non sei molto convinto. <ride> no, non sono molto convinto. Okay, Ma lo faccio. faccio io, dai. No, 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 lo faccio, lo faccio. Not very convinced because I know it's going to make me all sweaty and sticky and I was all ready to go out, but I'll quickly change my top and then do it. We picked two rows of beans and I'm now trying to walk very slowly up the steps so I don't get too hot and sweaty. It's not easy. <laughs> and I'm going to go around town and see if any of the people have sold any of my books and if they need to replace any. So I'll stock up on books and take them around town with me. And then I've actually been invited for lunch um, down on the beach. Okay, I'm outside the Bar International, which actually features quite heavily in the book. Uh, there's a lot going on. They arrive here on the first day, and there's a lot going on sitting on this wall here where all the scooters are. So I've just asked Luigi, and he said, yes, I'm going to leave three signed books in the bar if anybody passes by and wants to buy one. way to do it. I, um, as I was signing the three books that I left there, there was a lady leaned over and said, is that a book? Can I buy one? So I sold one straight away, um, which is brilliant. So I've given Luigi another three and I've only got about four left now, so I couldn't take many with me. I didn't think I was going to get rid of them. Oh, me of little faith in myself. So I will carry on my journey around town, but I'll probably have to come out again if the others have sold. This is the Pio news agent at Fornillo. It's on the road as you're coming down from the Grotto di Fornillo bus stop, just past the Saracena d'Oro, and they've got some copies in here. In fact, they're actually in the window. Let's go have a look. There's a couple here in Federica's shop on the table, and you can see that they are signed inside. I've also left some books down near the centre of town at Casa e Bottega. Now I've had on Instagram a few rude comments telling me to shut up about the book and stop talking about it and I understand that some people don't read and don't want to know but let me just say this I don't do paid promotions or sponsorships or adverts on my Instagram or my YouTube and um, I am going to promote my book that I wrote 
all by myself and self-published all by myself. Is she going to put a file on my scooter now? I haven't parked in a proper place. Um, in the first week that I've published it. So please let me have this pleasure of promoting the hell out of my own book. Thank you. My friend Christian owns the Villa Flavia Gioia Hotel and he said I can leave some books so I'm just going to go in and leave some in reception for the guests probably. And coming down into the little alleyways that lead towards the beach, I'm going to go to Janny the newsagent. I left him five the other day. Oh my god, it's so busy down here. There is a whole box of books here at Blue Star to sell. Hello! Ciao! Ciao! Hai venduto qualche libro? Ieri uno! Si! I'm supposed to be meeting a friend on the beach for lunch, but I can't find him and the beach is rather huge. Um, I could call him. Oh, here he is. He's calling me now. Hold on. <laughs> So I found my friends, we're having lunch, we have a very unusual thing on our fruit tray today, but it's okay. <laughs> it's the next day, it's hot and we're going to go down to Carla's parents, take them some food and Carla's going to pick some apricots right now. This tree here only gave us about 10 apricots this year. Not very impressive. So we're taking down some of the potatoes that Carlo and Luca picked yesterday. Apricots and the green beans that Sky and I picked. We're leaving the doggies here because it's too hot for the little paws. Siamo portando anche questa da mamma, così puoi avere il wifi nella cucina. E guardare i nostri video. <laughs> so we often get asked, and we often answer, but we still get asked, why we grow so many fruits and vegetables in the garden. And it's because Carla has a very big family, and as you can see, we take everything down to share with other people in the family. And Luca takes stuff up as well, so it all gets shared out between about 20 people. While Carla was hooking up Wi Fi and fiddling with cables and stuff, I had a lovely chat with his mum. See, a proposal, Maddie, give me the word. 
So I interviewed her about all her brothers and sisters and I have an idea for a book and I'm gonna tell you this because it might force me to carry on with this idea but I needed to talk to Caro's mum about it first and get some memories from her. So we sat down, had a lovely long chat, I've taken some notes and we'll see if anything comes of it. Sicuramente sarà qualcosa di interessante perché nella nostra famiglia quasi ognuno dei miei zii ha fatto qualcosa di interessante. Mm, mm. I would go through uh, my skincare and makeup routine, which I never do on main videos. I normally just do these sort of things on Patreon. But I thought I'd talk to you about what I'm using in this extreme heat. So um, it's very hot at the moment. Today, I think it's about the, currently it's nearly 36 degrees. And as of next Tuesday, it's supposed to get up to 43 degrees, which is just ridiculous. So I thought I would go through what I use on myself. Also, because there's a funny story behind this. So. A few years ago, I mentioned that I used this deodorant here and it was hard to get in Europe. And I should have never mentioned that because everybody started sending me them. And I ended up with literally a whole box like this full of these deodorants, which I then subsequently developed a reaction to and couldn't use anymore. So I had to give a lot of them away and my friends were all very, very grateful. And I've got five left here, but I can't use them. Every time I use them, I end up getting a rash, very, very itchy and very annoying. So I can't use it anymore. So I've got a, currently a huge collection of deodorants, trying to find one that works for me without causing a rash, especially when it's hot. That seems to be the problem when it's hot. It might be more of a sweat rash. So I've been through so many different types of deodorants and currently the ones that I'm using the most is the Mitchum 48 Hour Shower Fresh, which is nearly finished. Don't send me any though. And the Mitchum Bamboo Powder one, which is more of a natural powder one. Those are the ones that work. And when I say work, I mean putting on deodorant in 36, 38 degrees, very, very hot weather, and then climbing 500 steps. That is the test to see if it works or not, because a lot of the natural ones, like the simple one, which is lovely and delicate, but can, does not hold out with 500 steps. Now, of course, in this heat, the most important thing is to be protected against the sun. And I am very, very vigilant about that. And I always have been. I don't sunbathe, as you can tell by my lovely whiteness. Um, I sometimes stick on a bit of fake tan, but that's about it. I don't sunbathe ever. And I haven't done for years and years. Um, and I always try and put factor 50 on my face every morning. And up until recently, I've been using either the unseen sunscreen and the skin SkinCeuticals sunscreen which I've loved because it's very very lightweight but Roberto the pharmacist here in Positano from Pharmacia Rizzo asked me to try his new Factor 50 face sunscreen and I picked it up from him a couple of weeks ago now and I've been trying it out I've worn it every day for the last two weeks and I absolutely love it I didn't think I would at all I was mm, locally made it might not be any good I'm very specific about face sunscreen it has to be extremely lightweight it mustn't be sticky or tacky or leave a white sheen or be oily I want it to sink into the skin and be comfortable to wear and this ticked all of the boxes and I'm really surprised about it. It also has no silicones in it, so it's great for anybody who's allergic to silicon, as in my friend Celine, she can't use anything with silicon in. And she tried this last week when she was here and she's absolutely loved it and bought one as well. So if you are around in Positano and you need some sunscreen, I highly recommend this one, it's really good. 
and that made me more interested in the range of products that the Positano Essencia are doing. And Roberta talked me through some of the products and gave me a few to try. So there's the hydrating water, the Aqua de la Sirena, like the Evian spray. It's got olive leaf, capers and prickly pear in it. It's it's an old recipe from the Amalfi Coast. In fact, Roberto's father, who's the pharmacist before Roberto, he invented this many years ago. It's absolutely lovely. I wish I'd recorded Celine trying this because she's the one that's more, much more exuberant than me. And she came, oh my God, this is fantastic. This is wonderful. This is amazing. Also, now this is something that I don't need because I don't sunbathe, but they're after sun gel. It's aloe vera and it's 100% bio. It's basically, it's aloe vera and prickly pear. And... Sky's used that a couple of times already, so that's good for after sun and burns and anything like that. And I've also been using the Olio Solare Body and Hair Oil, and it's 15 SPF, and it's very, very light oil. I've been using it on my hair, not today because I've had a swim and just left my hair to do its thing. But I use this on my legs, actually, and took a photo recently when we were away in Cilento and my legs looked amazing in the photo and it was a bit of a freak but this was on them at the time so yes I highly recommend those products if you're in Positano and you want some skincare products. What else am I using in this ridiculous weather? Well there's no point doing a full face of makeup that's for sure so in the morning I'm putting on the Glow Ritual Vitamin C Serum from Antipodes and then I put on the facial sunscreen and over the top of that, I put on some mascara. Now, I used to be able to use any single mascara in the world until a couple of years ago and something changed. And they all started smudging and crumbling and leave me with like panda bear eyes. And I, by chance, tried the Lancome Hypnose Volume of Porter mascara. And this one on me doesn't smudge, it doesn't crumble, and it doesn't leave black marks under my eyes. So for the summer, I also bought the waterproof version of that, which is just as good. And that's what I've been using. A little bit of concealer under the eyes, and I'm using the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. And a little bit of blush, and I'm just about to open a new one. I, I uh, because I'm quite pale, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek Blush in First Love, which is the palest one. Very, very pale. I don't need any more of that. You can't go wrong with it, because you can't put on too much, because it's so pale. Other than that, a little bit of lipstick, and that is it for the day. So I'm sorry to all the men who must have, find this, must have found this extremely boring. Okay, that's far too much feminine stuff. Let's go and find out what Carlo is up to. What, <laughs> what are you making now? Okay. Uh, <laughs> voglio che tu provi a indovinare che cosa posso fare con questo secchio. A chair? Mm, non esattamente. Potrebbe anche essere una sedia, ma non lo sto facendo per fare una sedia. A very small circus. Che no, non è un circo questo coso, perché è rosso e bianco, io non c'era arrivato con la testa, mi spiace. Allora, guarda, facciamo così, ti farò vedere quello che è quando sarà finito. Ok. Ecco, lasciamo un po' di mistero. Ho dimenticato dov'è la mia pittura preferita. C'è tanta pittura ma non c'è quella che mi serve. Uh, ok. 
che bel fresco qua giù mm. dormiamo qua stanotte amore <ride> che meragni bello fresco eccolo là questo è tutto fatto con cose riciclate un bidone vecchio pezzi di legno vecchi che erano di qualcos'altro ok well lunch is ready whenever you are it will wait though you can have it later if you want si sì, finisco di pitturare questo così si asciugherà dopo ok si deve solo asciugare la pittura diciamo che è pronto l'oggetto è quello Non lo so, sembra un ciminiere con la maniglia, qualcosa di strano.